Wobble love a dub dub motherfuckers. What's going on everyone? It is I, it was her Jack of All Trades with Foul Mouth coming to Urban. And welcome back to another exciting video. This is another book review. And it's about it. It's another it's another book on my favorite railroad, the Monon. So let's go ahead and before we go up and down the Monon, I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for you know, for all the subscribers and shit. Um, I've seen a few people have dropped and shit and left, but more people came back. So thank you so much. Let's get to a thousand fucking subscribers and let's go ahead and hop into this thing. And for all my friends out there, thank you for sticking around. Let's go ahead and hop into it, guys. We got ourselves The Monon in Color, Volume 2, by James Lunard. Now, the library has Monon in Color, Volume 1, but it's not for circulation. It's kind of really stupid. They have another copy of this for not circulation here because it's in their Indiana room, which is their kind of their archive, which is really fucking stupid. And I actually put a request into them to buy another copy of Monon in Color Volume 1 that could be circulated so I could share it with you guys. So, this is a picture book, a photographic book of the Monon Railroad. So, it's going to be really fucking awesome, guys. Go ahead and dive right into this. Absolutely fucking amazing. And if you guys remember my last, um, my last book review, which was about uh, Monon, the Hoosier Line, I told again give you guys a little bit of the history of the railroad. In this, there's a little bit. Of, they tell you the history of the railroad and as it was going through as well too. Also with another awesome freaking road map of the Monon also with other railroads that crisscross the state of Indiana as well. And of course it breaks into the narration of Friday the 30th of July 1971 the last full day of Monon operations. Basically everything that happened that day. Of course chapter one we already get into the amazing colors of the red and two-tone gray Streamliners and later the black and gold engines that replaced them. And I have to say, I mean, just seeing these photographs really just fills a sense of pride in what this amazing railroad accomplished. And it was a small railroad, but for being a small railroad, it was a much beloved railroad. And the pictures in this book are absolutely freaking amazing. I mean, they're just beautiful pictures. I mean, like I said, it, this is a picture book. It tells you different places, you know, Shelby and um, Resnalar. And this is uh, Monon, the town of Monon. Uh, Chalmers, Brookston. Uh, the Monon 2nd Division, the bridge over the Wabash River at Delphi. Uh, for Wabash Crossing. Deer Creek Trestle. Uh, crossing Wildcat Creek. Rossville. Sheridan. I mean, my god, I mean, look at these fucking pictures. These pictures are fucking amazing. And I mean, that's, this whole book is just filled with these incredible pictures of the day-to-day -day life of Broad Ripple, uh, the crossing into Indianapolis, 
pulling in the Indianapolis. This is F3, A, A2, B, and A2, A. I just, you know, seeing these pictures and stuff, it really gives you a fucking sense of what this railroad was. And, like, it was beautiful. I mean, the trains they operated were fucking beautiful. The service was spectacular. And it was just, you know, it, it was just such a sad thing, the fact that they didn't have enough. This is um, one of the Fairbanks Morse H1544s. They only own two of these. But still. Uh, this Lafayette station. Um, I'm trying to think what this is at. I think it's Lafayette Junction. Uh, Linden. Like I said, if you guys live in Indiana, you guys will know a lot of these. Crawfordville. And this is uh, the Diamonds at Ames. So, a lot of these places sadly ain't around anymore. So, a lot of these pictures show places they're not even there. Uh, Rochdale, Bainbridge, Cloverdale. That's not there anymore, and all that track ain't there no more. Uh, Wallace Junction. Uh, this is going through Gosport. This is in the Gosport. Of course, the Gosport Depot. That son of a bitch is not there anymore. I actually seen where that was standing. That son of a bitch is not there no more. Ellettsville. I actually live really near Ellettsville, and that son of a bitch is gone. Bloomington Station, that was between 4th and 5th Street. That son of a bitch is gone. Uh, I mean, a lot of this, but, I mean, like I said, the pictures and shit, they really show you McDole Yard, most of it, basically, it's gone. That was the yard in Bloomington. Uh, Bedford, there's a lot of the stuff in Bedford's gone, too. Like I said, I mean, a lot of this, a lot of the stations and stuff, the Monon, you know, used, they're gone. But because of these magnificent and wonderful pictures it preserves not just let's see Salem it doesn't just preserve it preserves that time period Orleans uh, fuck. I'm sorry I'm not giving a lot of commentary but it's just if you guys like I said if you guys love railroad history you know like I've been saying and if you guys love Indiana history this is definitely a book you definitely want or if you're a model railroader and you want to model some part of the Monon Railroad, this is a book you must have. Uh, New Albany. And of course, the New Albany Freight House. Going over the K, going into New Albany to go over the um, K and IT Bridge. I mean, let's see, branch lines. There's just, like I said, there's just so much Francisville, Paoli, Meridaville, uh, Wanata, of course, another picture of Meridaville, Clay City, uh, French Lick, French Lick, French Lick, uh, uh, Midland, of course, locomotive assignments. And seeing the pictures too of the actual motion power for the Monon as well is just amazing. You know, spent you know seeing all these pictures of all these different locomotives and stuff. I love the F3s. I love the passenger F3s, and later on, of course, the freight F3s. I just love the paint schemes on them. To me, they were just the most iconic paint scheme. I think besides the Santa Fe paint scheme that were on these covered wagons and I love these big Alcos, the C the the C six twenty eights, they were fucking amazing and, and of course the C four twenties, both the two high hoods, they had five oh one, five oh two, and the rest of what their their low hoods. Very nice engines. And of course later on they bought the U twenty three Bs from General Electric. And of course passenger cars. I just, like I said, I love the colors on the passenger cars. They were just beautiful. And, of course, this was a really unique color for one. Because an old Baltimore Ohio car and these three-letter motor has a really cool.
cool paint scheme, I think. Like I said, this is like, like I said, it's, it's a, it's a picture book, full of amazing pictures of this now. Sadly, you know, defunct railroad, and like the song goes, you know, she was a Hoosier line, and you know, it's just sad to say that this railroad's gone, but you know. There's a lot of people out there that love this railroad, and of course I, I'm one of the big fans of the railroad. You know, just all the different equipment that they had over the years, like these cabooses here, these bay window cabooses, they were built at Lafayette Shop between 1958 and 1959. And of course, they had other cars through that transfer cabooses, and they even took old Pullmans and made bunk cars, and tool cars and stuff out of them and, and of course the freight cars you can't forget about the freight cars they had so many amazing type of freight cars like you know these kind of cars that had said Hoosier line on top of them they had big box cars they had small box cars they had flat cars covered cars I mean they said there's hoppers covered up you know gondolas tank cars the Monon only owned five tank cars ever, and they were used for um, company service by the store department. Flat cars, hoppers, box cars, of course, lots of, lots and lots of gondolas and hoppers, lots and lots of those. And of course, they had piggyback cars too. So, all in all. The Monon and Keller, Volume 2, is a magnificent look at the mid to later years of the railroad when the railroad was starting to wane off before the merger with the Louisville and Nashville in 1971. I think it's a great book if you are studying and researching the railroad and honestly also modeling the railroad. I give the book two thumbs up and fucking five stars. It's amazing, guys. If you love railroads, you love trains, you love Indiana history, definitely check out this book, The Monon and Keller, Volume 2. And also check out Volume 1 as well, because I'm definitely going to have to look at Volume 1. And I'll share it with you whenever they get another copy of it. So, there you have it, guys. That is my review of the book, The Monon and Keller, Volume 2 by James Lunard. And I hope you guys enjoyed the look through and a little bit of my fucking commentary and shit. If you have any questions or comments about anything, leave in the fucking comment section below and I'll get back with you. If you're new to the channel and like the shit I'm doing, hit that fucking subscribe button. Hit the damn notification bell. Never miss another video again. Until next time, this is Commander Urban saying let the line be clear hit for you. And uh, uh, up and down the moan on with all of you. And God bless you all. Until next time, so long motherfuckers and I'll take care of and uh, take care with y'all, and I'll see you later. Oh, up and down the Monon, everything is fine. She's a rootin' tootin' Monon, she's a Hoosier line.